Hi, welcome to the practice. I'm Dr. McLaughlin, come on in. Been so glad to meet you. I'm just glad to be here. Yes, okay. thank you for seeing me. Of course, of course. How can we help you today? We've been in practice for 25 years nearly now, but this is a new office for us, and we really wanted to make it very nice. I know nobody wants to come see me. I get that. So you might as well come and enjoy yourself. See? We make it very comfortable. We have soft music on relaxed environment. We just want to have really good chi. We hope that you feel that when you come. Come, let's look around. This is our new page room. It's always down whenever we need to. And uh, this is the place that we usually bring new patients. It's one of our larger rooms, primarily because patients tend to bring family. And we want them to feel free to do that. It's got a lot of my information. People like to read about that to make sure that I'm a real doctor. I am. And we also want to make it cozy, so we have special little artifacts and nice touches. I'm kind of partial to bling. And um, usually the TV is on something very calming, soothing station that's very picturesque. This is another consult room we had. Just in case we need to have some privacy discussions with patients. Sometimes my staff will come in here to talk about patients with, um, with family. We have a checkout area right there and uh, we, we uh, have our patients come right here. They interact with my staff here. We, again, we, have, we keep our, the theme of the light and breezy look all throughout the office with our patients and with our images, etc. It's a small office, but it's just me and my staff, so we don't need much. We have another exam room here, and again, modern feel. Um, I'm kind of partial to orchids, so I like that too. And We have special little places that we want the patients to put their special artifacts so they don't have to put them on the floor. We care about that, we do. And another exam room that's very similar to this. Not much else to see here, but again, small, quaint, cozy. This is my office, and this is the room, this is my favorite room. This is the room that I talk to patients about um, more serious things and consultations. We've got recently diagnosed cancer patients uh, or other patients who are having difficult problems. When I bring patients here, I always say, come on in, have a seat on my cloud. I'm Dr. Terry McLaughlin, and I'm a board-certified general surgeon who specializes in diseases of the breast. I've been in breast surgical oncology for 25 years now, and I can't say I really do love it. Kind of like the one thing I'm good at. I'm not exactly sure that I knew I was going in this direction when I finished college and when I went to medical school. What's required for this is, at a minimum, four years of medical school, and then a residency in general surgery. At least I think that's the way it still is now. After general surgery, a lot of residents subspecialize in various forms of, of surgery. And uh, in 1994, when I picked breast surgical oncology, there actually were not any surgical oncology fellowships that were breast only. The only one there was was here in Dallas at Baylor University downtown in Dallas. And so that's what brought me to Dallas. So that too was a one year fellowship. And after that, I joined a practice at Medical City 
and uh, I've been in the Metroplex ever since then. A breast cancer surgeon is a surgeon who specializes in diseases of the breast. They tend to, uh, because they are focused on a very narrow spectrum of disease, they're able to expand the depth of their knowledge and they're able to keep up with the technology as it comes out. And uh, there are a lot of developments in the management of breast cancer over the last 15, 10 years, changes all the time. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, I see patients in the office, and so that's pretty regular. I dress up, I wear a white coat, or in this case, a black coat. And I see patients uh, from about nine o'clock to four o'clock. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, whatever patients that I saw during the office who might need surgery are the days that I set those patients aside for surgery. So a typical Tuesday begins for me around eight o'clock in the morning and I operate from that time until they make me stop, which is usually around three. Those are my favorite days. The OR is my happy place. And I always say I go to the office so that I can get back to my happy place, which is surgery. That's where all surgeons love to be. I do surgeries that include excision of benign lesions, such as fibroadenomas, uh, drainage of abscesses, and in breast infections and so forth. Um, but on the cancer end, we are doing primarily lumpectomies and mastectomies and uh, lymph node surgery. Most of my patients who get mastectomy are gonna get reconstruction. Kinda makes the bitterness of having a mastectomy a little bit better. So Dr. McLaughlin, what do you enjoy most about breast surgery? I like being able to intervene in people's lives in a meaningful way and know that I can get them through it and they'll have a great outcome. I also like the control uh, that the hours, the elective hours give me for the specialty. So I can pretty much run it like a office-based practice. Um, that's very important to me. Um, I'm married, I have two sons and I have them very early in my career. And when they were very young, it was important that mommy be available to them, uh, no matter if their mothers are surgeon or not. We all only have one mother, and the responsibility doesn't end just because you had to go to work. Yep. I know all women can relate to that. We, we wear a lot of hats. So one of the things about this particular subspecialty of general surgery is that uh, when it was pretty much five o'clock, I can be able to let the day end and go home and be mom and wife too. That's good to hear because you know you have students that are interested in surgery, especially yeah. women, and they're afraid of the work-life balance, not having enough time to raise a family yeah. and do things that you enjoy, but you said that those things are actually possible. They are possible. However, uh, they will probably be delayed 10 years gotcha. um, because in that 10 year period of training, uh, it does not allow for what I just said. It mm -hmm. does not allow for uh, a healthy relationship. It yep. does not easily lend itself to uh, a family mm -hmm. or uh, time with children, etc. So if you're willing to sacrifice that, then yes, you can have it all. You just may have to have it all later. <laughs> gotcha. um, so as a busy surgeon, what about things outside of medicine? What, what do you enjoy doing? I love, I have lots of interest outside of medicine. Uh -huh. um, I think what I enjoy the most is probably tennis mm -hmm. and in recent years I picked up uh, doing a little tap dancing and that's fun because it's like skipping yeah yeah and uh, um, I like to sing I'm not a good singer mm -hmm. and I recently participated in the senior follies in Richardson mm. and I had to audition for that I was really proud of it because that was a little that was stretching yeah. you know kind of more of an artistic side and it was it was fun. It was like a Broadway style show mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the Eisman Center. So uh, those things provide a lot of balance and of course I have my, my family. Um, Excellent. And I hear you're life. quite the comedian. Um, but I, I've been known to, um, you know, I don't want everybody to know all, yeah. my, all my skills at once. Yeah. But, yes, you, uh, you have a joke for us? Uh, let's see. I, okay, I heard this done. Um, focus on the family. Okay. Um, so there was, a, there was an older guy 
and his wife were having uh, their 50th anniversary, wedding mm -hmm. anniversary, and all their family and friends were gathered around, and, and they were having a big party for them, and, and there was a guardian angel that showed up, and he whispered in the, uh, the woman's ear, uh, listen, you can have one wish. I'll grant you any wish you want. What would it be? And she said, I really wish that, um, that my husband and I could take a trip around the world together. Mm. Um, they were also celebrating their 60th birthday mm. together. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, she, the angel said, got it. You, you got it. You and your husband are going to take a trip around the world together, just like you always wish. Uh, the, the angel then whispered into her husband's ear and said, listen, you get one wish, mm -hmm. anything you want. And uh, he said, I wish my wife were 30 years younger. Mm. And uh, just like that, he was 90 years old. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he man. got his wish. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> yes. What, so. what type of advice would you have for students that may be interested in surgery, breast cancer surgery, or just medicine in general? What, what type of advice would you have for them? My advice to the younger um, people in college and who are not quite sure where they're going is to First of all, keep going. Mm -hmm. um, when people ask me how long did it take you to get to be a surgeon, and a particular breast cancer surgeon, I don't really want to tell them that it's 15 years yep. before I had a real job. Because when you tell people that who are already pretty tired of school, it's sort of deflating, like, are you kidding me right now? I'm so tired right now, I'm tired of high school. But don't look at it that way. Look at it as a journey. And the journey has lots of winding roads and a circuitous path, uh, but you're on your way somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you enjoy the journey along the way because at some point you do get paid, mm -hmm. even though it's not like a real, real job. But if you were going to even be the, um, like work your way up in corporate America, you wouldn't come right out of college and do that. You're going to go through your steps and you're going to have to earn your, your progress in the country. Well, think of that. As medicine yep. that when you come out of college you go into medical school think of that as your like your apprenticeship and then mm -hmm. then you get a residency and even further more in your apprenticeship and then one day you finish and you're a real surgeon or real OB or whatever your your interest may lie but then you're like okay now I'm ready I'm ready to branch out in corporate America and take on my partnership now Yep. Uh, in this company and and show my worth so it's uh think of it as a progress not just all school because it's not school it's real life yeah and I, I think you said it um you said it well that you have to take it day by day it's a long journey but in the end um it pays off and like any career that you go into or any business you're gonna have to put in your dues and put Absolutely. your put their hours in right it's breast cancer awareness month what do you have to say to the people out there in the public about breast cancer for the month of October? I think it gets commercialized a lot and that's unfortunate. Um, football players are wearing pink socks mm -hmm. and um, there's lots of banners, there's lots of walks. Uh, but what we're finding, particularly in the African American community, is that we're still not screening to the same degree as other cultures. And when we do get screened, we're not following through with treatment mm -hmm. to the same degree as other cultures. So even though we're aware, we've got to do more than just be aware. We also got to follow through and get our treatments and see it through. The, there's still a divide in the mortality rate of African American women compared mm -hmm. to other cultures. And it's about 25-30% stage wow. per stage. So um, sometimes we don't get diagnosed. When we get diagnosed, we don't follow, we don't seek treatment. If we seek treatment, we don't follow through with it for non-compliance reasons, mm -hmm. um, and then we don't follow up many times. So all along the ways, we we've got, and not to mention the biology of our tumors sometimes are different. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got multiple levels as to why we don't do as well uh, from screening to follow through with treatment. So what I'd like us to focus on as a culture, but women in general is that be aware of breast cancer, but it's not just a slogan. Mm. Go seek treatment. Yep. Get early detection because we still save lives that way. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking about treatment and patients that may have breast cancer or, or would like to see you as a patient, can you tell us about your practice location? How can patients get in touch with you? 
Well, we want to make that as simple as possible. Just, you can Google mm -hmm. my name, uh, Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas or Terry McLaughlin, MD. Uh, we are located off the tollway, we're easy to get to, and uh, we keep our office open and available. We're on most, most insurance plans. And if we're not on your plan, uh, come and see me uh, as a cash pay visit. It would be well worth your time, I think, uh, because sometimes you just need one good visit mm -hmm. to kind of direct your path, and uh, we will more than happy to do that for our patients. Awesome. Well, Dr. McLaughlin, thank you so much for uh, meeting with me today. And um, uh, you're a real inspiration to a lot of people out here. And um, I wish you all the success in your practice. Oh, thank you so much for your help. Welcome. Okay.